Hey everybody, Chris Bober here. I am an associate broker and the owner of Team Bober with Nebraska Realty. And I'm coming to you on the Friday before Labor Day here in 2017. Hope you're all getting ready for this fabulous weekend. Looks like it's gonna be great. But what I wanted to do today is maybe to give you guys an update on the real estate market and some statistics that are gonna show you where our real estate market has been, where it is right now, and where it's going. So, Nebraska Realty does such a great job of providing us as agents with these statistics, and they're there for us to share with you, the, the public out there, and help you get a better understanding of the real estate market and what you're into and what you're up against. So, to start out with, um, we're, we just finally have our statistics from the end of July. So, the, for the first seven month of, months of 2017 now, we do have statistics that show where the real estate market has been, and what you'll see here is our market summary over the last 12, 12 months, right? So the gray on here is the 2016 to 17, the most recent 12 months, and the red line is the previous 12 months, okay? So now what you'll see is back in the sp late end of 2016, beginning of 2017 up until March, the previous 12 month market has surpassed the previous year's market. So these gray, bar graphs are, are higher this month, this month, this month, this month, this month, this month, and that month, all right? That means they were outperforming the previous year. However, what we are seeing right now is February, April, May, June, and July of this year have all underperformed from where they were in 2016. That means there's less residential closings this year than there has been in those five months than the previous year's month. So I would say that that is the start of what I would consider a trend. Now we do experience a decline. We see again the seasonality of the market that takes a dip in the winter, goes back up in the middle of summer and goes back down, but they are still lower. This last month we came in, you know, just 11 under the previous year, but five out of six previous months have been less. So what we're seeing here is what we're down one, for 2000, or the last 12 months I'd say, we're down just a percent as far as overall closings, but if you take the previous 12 months, given our strong winter and spring we had, we're still 3.5% up, 3.6% up from last year. So the market remains really, really strong. It's not experiencing a tremendous dip, it's just the incline at which sales are going have maybe ticked just a little bit. And we'll talk a little bit about how that's gonna affect the rest of the market. So another statistics, Couple of statistics that I like to kind of look at right here is the, the, the market and how many listings are out there. So you continually hear about how we're having a constant listing shortage, um, inventory shortage, and it's throughout the country, uh, primarily driven by the fact that there was a good period of time during our recession where they did not build any houses. Um, the bubble burst, it got really bad. We're still recovering and haven't gotten all the way. Now, we'll look at right now, at, as of right now, the end of July, we have 22,536 listings at the end of July. Now that is a couple hundred less than last year, and it's about, gosh, 700, 800 less than the previous year. So as you can see, the inventory is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking, all right? Um, pending listings, again, are down as well. Not, to, not tremendously, but that we have less active listings and less pending listings. So less properties for sale and available, less people are buying them. Interestingly enough, we have the, the listings that are out there on the market. Here's the percentages as they break down, right? So you see the biggest chunk of listings that are out there right now is between $250,000 and $500,000. The, the, the market that actually is the strongest with the most sales only has 31% of the listings. $100,000 to $250,000 is where most of the sales in Omaha fall. That's only 31%. So you can see the 250 to 500 range, it's growing in inventory, right? So you have houses that aren't selling as fast, inventory starting to stack up just a little bit. And then of course, you get to the 500 to a million range, that inventory stacking up too. There's not, it takes longer to sell those properties. Um, and then of course, under, under $100,000 is 12%. Now, here's the alarming thing about that statistic. So if you wanna look up right there, 200, 250 to 500 is 44% of the listings. But if you look at the, the, the six month statistics that we put out last month, overwhelmingly 100 to $250,000 is where the most of the sales are. So most of the sales are in a market that's smaller than the listings that are out there. So 
I would say that that, that one hundred two hundred fifty thousand dollars has a tremendous demand. The two hundred fifty to five hundred, twenty six percent of the market, but it's got. But if you look back on on uh, the stats, it's forty four percent of the listing. So we're, we're starting to experience some imbalance in our market, and what's happening is. The ones that are in the biggest affordable range, the 100 to 250, are getting gobbled up quick. The, the, the properties above them are starting to become, what I would say, unaffordable. If what, the thing that, that really stacks up right here is you look at the average sale price in Omaha, $221,000. Now, about five years ago, the average sales price in Omaha was about $160,000. It has gone up a lot. I would say that the average price of a house sky, has skyrocketed. It has really gone up. And at what point does the market start to pull back because it's just unaffordable? Well, that's what we'll have to kind of wait, find, wait and find out to see. So, of course, overall days on market, if you're looking at only 21 days, the median is five, which means that the, there's a lot of them that are selling in five days or less, okay? Now, you might be wondering, oh, that's great, those are fancy pictures, thanks for the statistics, but how does this affect me? How's this affecting the real estate market? So, here's a quick little synopsis that I kind of put together um, of what's going on with our real estate market. Number one, prices are still rising. I, I think that even though sales are dipping a little bit, prices are still on a path to go pretty high, right? If you look in 2012, the average sale price was $245,000 in Omaha, according to the OABR. I went back to the same statistic five years later, it's $304,000. That's taken into account maybe a little bit more than we do, but that's a 24% increase in five years. Omaha doesn't have 24% increase in five years. We're not the California, Florida. We're not big high spike markets. This is very, very much out of character for Omaha. Um, that's new sale price. I'm sorry, that existing price went from 135 to 170, which is a 26% increase. So we are, are skyrocketing when it comes to price increases, the, the market being great, you know, unemployment being low, um, I would say that having mortgage rates so low are driving this. But again, how long can that last? Um, what we are seeing is that sales are slowing, all right? Sales right now are slow. We're down from last year for five of the previous six months. Overall, throughout the country, we are down. Again, there's the, here's this gap that I was talking about earlier. The top sales price range is 100 to 50. 58% of, of the sales in our market occur in that range. However, that's not the top listing range. The top listing range is 250 to 500. And anyone who follows economics can see that on the edges of a market are where they start to show cracks. Right now, with the higher end houses, 500 to a million plus, those are hard. Now, it's starting to get hard to sell the 250 to 500 houses, as we can see by the statistics. When is that going to creep into the biggest price range that's 100 to 250? You know, I don't know, but it's not gonna, it's not that far away, I, I would honestly say. Um, we are having what we can probably see as a growing uh, affordability gap when there's a major, major difference between the average new construction price and the average existing price. At some point, because the only way to add inventory is to build houses, at some point you out overrun that market and they have to kind of come together at some point, right? All right, so the market is going to continue to adjust. We all know this, markets will, make, will take this, the, everything that's out there and they will ebb and flow. We all know that we're heading on this upward cycle, and at some point we're gonna level off, and hopefully we don't fall into the earth like we did before. Hopefully it's just a nice little slow, gradual uh, decrease rather than a, a bubble being bursted. Um, slower sales that we're starting to see, prices will flatten out. Prices can't keep going up forever. They gotta start slowing down. Um, I think we're gonna start seeing that real soon. Hopefully moving towards a balanced market. Again, when that happens, I don't know. I don't know when, when sellers and buyers are gonna have the same advantage. Right now, sellers are in a really good position. Buyers are fighting. So at some point, it starts to balance and may even go the other way. Um, that's coming here. Hopefully in the near future, it'll definitely help. Um, but there's one thing I'd like to kind of finish up with. Uh, it's something that I tell my clients all the time. They always ask me, hey, you know, when is the best time to sell my house? And what I would say is, when do you need to sell your house, all right? Because we don't work on market statistics. We identify market statistics, and when someone needs to buy or sell a home, they come to us, we help them identify the market and put them in the best position, right? Your house is your home, okay? If you're buying it to live there, don't buy it as an investment. Think of it more like a retirement account. You can't touch it for a long time. 
you're really going to use it to live. You get the joy and everything that goes along with home ownership when you purchase a house. Now, investment real estate, that's different. But if it's your home, when you need to buy or sell, that's when you call us and we help you. Uh, what I will say is if you call the pros at Team Bober, um, one of the things that we say, I like to incorporate football in there, you know, call the pros at Team Bober and we will tackle the market for you. Again, your buying and selling decisions should not be based upon what the market's doing because you can't time the market. If you're gonna time it and get, a, like right now, if you wanna sell your house, you'll probably get a premium price. If it's priced correctly, if it's a good condition, and it's a good location. But then you get to go buy a house and maybe you go in there and have to pay more than you think to purchase a house. So you're never gonna get both sides of it, right? Again, the need, and when you need to buy and sell a house is when you, need, when you should be doing it, and then call the pros, a team over, like us, and we'll tackle the market for you. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions about the marketplace, if you wanna understand how you and your real estate fits, your home fits in the real estate market, whether you wanna make a decision immediately to buy or sell, or maybe down the line, we're here to educate you, we're here to help you, as you can see. We try to give you as much information as possible to help you make the best decision. So thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great holiday weekend, and we'll see you next time.